What's up everybody, Natalie here, and today I'm reviewing Pignorant by Joey Carbstrong. If you haven't heard of it, it's his new documentary about gas chambers in the UK. We're gonna be talking about if it's too graphic, if it's compelling, if non-vegans are gonna relate to it, did Joey successfully jump from YouTuber to filmmaker, and most importantly, if it was worth the $1.99 I spent to rent it on Amazon Prime. We're gonna start with a brief summary, and then I'll talk about what I liked, some things I didn't like, and my big problem with it overall. Let's get into it. It starts off by going over Joey's background and the his previous life as a gang member, going to jail, becoming sober, and the fact that he's always loved pigs. He mentions Babe, which is one of my favorite movies. It really holds up if you haven't seen it since you were younger, and it really emphasizes that Joey has always loved pigs throughout his life. We're introduced to the main characters, which is Joey, of course, Terion, his partner, and Dan, who is... Uh, another vegan activist that they actually use to get a job at the slaughterhouse. The central question throughout this documentary is, is there a humane way to kill animals? Dan starts working at this slaughterhouse in Manchester, and that part was actually really funny because I guess when he was being hired, the person who was hiring him was talking about how great their security was and how no vegan activists could ever get in there, and he was just thinking, well, I'm already in here and we are getting in, so that part was really cool. Then it shows kind of the day-to-day -day of working in a slaughterhouse, and there's a really interesting section on slaughterhouse workers, how, how they have higher rates of depression, PTSD, all this stuff that we probably know, but I thought that was a really great overview and that non-vegans can definitely relate to that. Next, we see Joey trying to contact various people who work in the industry because it was revealed that these animal welfare organizations advised against using gas chambers back in the early 2000s. So he's trying to ask, if we know that pigs have a terrible reaction to this, why are we still doing this? Weren't we supposed to move away from it? And it shows that he's not really getting any answers at all. We learn a bit about Red Tractor Farms, how Red Tractor is basically the industry and they profit from the animal products sold that have their labels, so it's really not a good metric by which to judge animal welfare. We also visit a free-range pig farm and that part was crazy because when you first pull up, it looks really nice and idyllic. There's pigs outside. But then you get a little closer and see all the problems with it, and Joey decides to do a full-scale investigation of that farm as well. Next, Joey and Tarion go to an animal farming conference. They start talking to people about the gas chambers, asking RSPCA people why they're still approving these products. And it's funny because they say they're working for this organization, and people are asking them about this organization, and then it turns out that that organization didn't even exist anymore, um, so I thought that was really funny. Now they go and they plant the cameras in the gas chambers, it's really tense, and there's this part about how to retrieve them. Joey has to wear a harness, and you know, he makes the point that he's risking his life by going in these gas chambers, and it's really pretty emotionally intense. There's this like, are they gonna get the footage, are they not? The footage comes out, it looks amazing, and then Joey takes it to the streets, and there are street interviews dispersed throughout the documentary that shows how little the public knows about animal farming and their reaction when they find out what's happening to these pigs in the gas chambers. There's also a part about mother pigs and they're in these crates and it's really disgusting and Joey actually manages to rescue two piglets from that farm and then at the end it shows them being happy. There's, you know, there's a discussion on speciesism, why we view some animals as individuals, why we view other animals as resources, and the documentary kind of ends with this discussion. Is there a humane way to slaughter animals? Of course, the vegans come to the conclusion, no, there is not. Some of the parts I really liked were Dan, the guy going undercover. He was really funny, kind of provided some comic relief to a very tense documentary. They also had an ex-slaughterhouse worker who turned vegan, and his story was really compelling because he was, he didn't look like a person you would think would be vegan, so it, I think getting those different perspectives is really important. Joey did a great job of remaining level-headed throughout the documentary. If you watch his street interviews, you know that sometimes Joey can get a bit more emotional, and I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing during activism, but I think it would have been a bad thing in the context of this documentary because ideally we want non-vegans to see it, and coming across as overly emotional is not a good thing, especially when people already have that perception of vegans, so I thought Joey did a really great job with that. As far as how graphic it is, I went into this thinking, oh my god, it's gonna be like watching Dominion or Earthlings, and I was pleasantly surprised that that was not the case. There were a couple really graphic parts, but as a whole, it's not graphic throughout. The part that's really gonna stick with me is the free-range farm where it showed this 
pig that was paralyzed and, you know, trying to walk and can't. And then one of the workers comes over and I won't spoil anything, but that's one of those th scenes that's definitely going to stick with me for a while. And then it's revealed that the owner of that farm was actually Britain's Farmer of the Year. So I love how this documentary showed that even in the best of the best animal farming, it's still horrific for the animals. There were also dumpsters filled with dead pigs and it was really disgusting. There was poop everywhere. So that was one of the highlights for me. The other part that was really graphic was the mother pigs and the gestation crates. And also obviously the footage of the gas chamber was very graphic, but I think that you could see it coming from far away enough that if you're not comfortable with that stuff, it's very easy to close your eyes, just wait out those parts of the documentary. And I do think it provides a really great overview of the pig industry and also about pig intelligence in general and just how cool and unique of a species they are. Now I wanna talk about some of the things that I didn't like and I wanna just make a disclaimer that I think Joey is amazing. I really respect all the work he's done. He's one of the hardest working vegan activists and I don't wanna say this stuff just to criticize for no reason, right? The reason I'm saying it is so that the documentaries we make in the future can avoid some of these problems. So the biggest problem for me overall was that from a storytelling perspective, I don't think it did that great of a job. The timeline was all over the place. The editing was great technically, but not in terms of storytelling. You know, we kind of have this main thread of the gas chambers throughout, but at one point we're at a convention and then there's a farm and then the piglets are rescued and you don't really have a good sense of when all of this is happening and how it relates directly to the main plots. At the end, when they showed the rescued piglets, I had forgotten that he had rescued piglets at all because there was almost so much going on in the documentary that it was hard to keep track of what was important. The other problem was that it felt like the emotional high point of the documentary was him getting into the gas chamber and getting the footage. And that was really cool and really compelling, but the point of footage isn't to get footage. The point of footage is what you do with that footage. It's barely mentioned in the documentary at all. This is just sort of tacked on at the end in kind of an awkward way, but Joey actually shut that slaughterhouse down because of the footage. That's absolutely amazing to me. I think that should have been the emotional high point of the documentary. It could have shown Joey waking up, putting out the footage, seeing the public's reaction, and his reaction when the slaughterhouse was shut down, because that's so cool. And the fact that it wasn't in the documentary at all is, I just, yeah, I, I disagree with that creatively. Maybe they had already shot it and edited it, but that's one of the things you go back and you remake the documentary to add because that is so important. The other problems I had with it was that it kind of glossed over Joey's vegan story. It goes from gang to sober, and then he's this animal rights advocate, but it doesn't actually show his process of going vegan. And I find that that's such an important piece for non-vegans to see because they don't really understand why we care about animals so much. And we need to build those bridges so that they do understand where we're coming from, why we do what we do. And when you're thinking of storytelling and documentaries, it's really helpful to think of an A plot and then a B plot and a C plot. So the A plot should have been getting the slaughterhouse shut down. Here's how he got the footage to do that. The B plot could have been rescuing the piglets. Picks are individuals, talk about speciesism there. And the C plot could have been just kind of like the other tertiary characters, like about the slaughterhouse workers and things like that. But like I said, it felt pretty disjointed. I wouldn't say that it felt more like a YouTube video than a documentary, but it didn't feel quite as much like a documentary as I would have liked. And at the end, when they answered the humane slaughter question, I think it felt like they were kind of hitting the viewer over the head with this information. There is no humane slaughter, this can't happen. I liked how Cowspiracy did that, where they had the main character, Kip, going through different types of animal farming. He gets to the best of the best with the duck and sees the duck being killed, and then he comes to his own conclusion, there is no way to humanely slaughter animals. When you're thinking of people viewing your work, you want them to come to their own conclusion and you guide them there. 
there's a principle in filmmaking called show don't tell and i think there were a lot of parts that could have been shown better and told less so yeah that's my main problem with it was the storytelling um another thing that i really like that i forgot to mention was that when joey's talking about rescuing those piglets he talks about how it's bittersweet because you want to rescue all of them but you can't and getting a couple individuals out is great but there's billions more that need help so i do think that you should watch this documentary if you're vegan especially if you have non-vegans in your household definitely bring them in and watch it it would be very hard to come out of this documentary and still want to eat pigs because just seeing what happens to them is so powerful. So yeah, definitely give it a watch. It was 100% worth the $1.99. That's basically a can of beans. Beans are really expensive now. It's terrible. So yeah, absolutely. You should rent it and share it with your friends and family. And you're going to learn a lot about gas chambers and a lot about pigs. So let me know down below. What did you think of this documentary? Do you think it was a compelling story? Did Joey surprise you if you want to support my work please join my patreon or you can download my free vegan outreach starter guide to learn how to talk to non-vegans special thanks to my morally superior patrons and i will see you next friday